What is Indigenous education? Geez, that, that's a that's a wide area, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, to me, I think Indigenous education has to do with uh, the land base land based knowledge, and and I think that by learning from the land that they can the uh, students or you know whoever will have more awareness of 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 the environment, more awareness about, um, you know, the relationship they have with the plant life, animal life, and so on, you know, and the importance of knowing what the tobacco is and how it relates to, you know, the relationship with the land, for example, because you always have to, it's a reciprocal relationship that we have. So if we're going to take anything from the land, we have to make sure we give, we give back, you know. And I think when we talk about Indigenous education, that is one of the most important components, is that reciprocal relationship that we have. Because anything that we do regarding Indigenous education, this tobacco always has to come first. Because uh, we were the last ones to come here upon the earth, according to some of our prophets, prophecies, and teachings, you know, and we're the most uh, pitifulest ones. So when we think about it from that aspect, then we know that, you know, if we're going to take a plant from the ground or if we're going to kill an animal or, um, you know, to, like, we, we need them to survive. So this here is what really helps with that, you know. And then the other thing too, I think, when I when we think about indigenous education, is um, all the different stages of life that you go through. You know, like uh, because our our way of life is is exactly that. You know, it's a way of life. It's not a religion. So when we walk our path, there's certain things that we always have to be mindful of and we have to be aware of. You know? For example, when we know that the baby is coming, we know that uh, we know by that water when that water breaks the birth, you know? and then when that baby travels through the canal, the birth canal, it's already telling the baby that you have to work on this side. So that you know that knowledge is already there, it's already embedded, it's in the blood of, of us as, as uh, Anishinaabe people. And so we have these different things that tell us about that. So the baby, you know, when the baby's working through, traveling through that birth canal, uh, that, you know, the baby's kind of saying, you know, the, or the spirit or whoever is saying that you have to work on this side. So, so then when the baby comes, you know, on, after making it through the birth canal, you know, then, and then when you watch that baby take its first breath, you know, and, and they begin their journey on this side. So then all through their life, all through their life, there's things there that help to guide them, to give them uh, that grounding, you know, like all these different teachings and all these different ceremonies. And so... For example, like, you know, the when the baby first walks up on the earth, you know, there's a walking out ceremony, you know, you know because it gives that child an opportunity now for him or her to explore the earth, you know, to develop that relationship with the earth. You know? And then, you know, as the child's growing, you know, there's different ceremonies along the way that helps that child to, you know, to be grounded. Um, to understand that they, you know, they are part of creation. So, you know, all these different ceremonies, that's what helps them to understand their relationship. And that's where that reciprocal comes in. Because all creation is giving to them, so they, the child or the human beings or Anishinaabek, have to, they have to give back. You know? I'm big on giveaways. You know, I... I really truly believe that we need to give away every time there's something that's given to us. Whether it's a naming ceremony, fasting ceremony, you know. 
puberty rites fast, you know, like all those ceremonies, we need to give back because something very special and very sacred happened. So, you know, it's important to give back because of that, that reciprocal relationship. And, you know, um, when we look at that, you know, it's, um, the Creator gave that path to us, you know, to walk. And he gave all those original instructions, you know, and he gave all those ceremonies. So we we have to um, always respect creation, and this is one way. It's by the tobacco. So we're giving, you know, and and even uh, we give back too when we have those giveaways. You know? So to me, that's what I look at indigenous education, and. It's about you as a person walking upon this earth and learning all that you can learn, you know, um, because one day when you get that age of um, elderhood or grandparenthood or whatever way you want to call it, because you're going to turn around now and you're going to look at that life coming towards you. and. And you, you have to, um, I guess the question that needs to be asked is, did I leave good tracks to follow? Because then you become that knowledge keeper. So you, and again, you're giving back. See, there's that reciprocal relationship. So, so you're giving back to those ones coming behind you, all the knowledge that you've, you've attained in your life. So... So it's not just, um, like people say that the elders have a lot of knowledge and they have, they have a lot of those, those experiences and whatnot, you know, and it's true, I agree. But there's also those young ones like yourself who has knowledge, you know. But when you look at the, the relationship you and I have, um, <clears throat> like we, we had a good conversation here, you know? but yet at the same time I'm giving back to you, you know based on the experience that I have and the knowledge that I've gained. And that's how it should be with, with a lot of our elders and, and the young people. They should be giving back. You know? Again, that's that reciprocal relationship. So when I look at Indigenous knowledge or Indigenous education, I guess that's, that's part of it, you know. And it could be so much, there's so much here, that's, that's such a big question, you know? Because when, you know, even like, you've heard that story about the seven stages of life, and all that goes on in those seven stages, you know, the ceremonies, the, the feasting that you need to do, and, you know, how to walk a good path, and to walk it with kindness, those values, those Nishnabe values we need to we need to really focus on as well, you know. What are they? You know? Like some say the, the seven grandfather teachings, yes. There's uh, those values in the in the four direction teachings. And then of course we have like the values that we've learned, you know, just in our own home environment. So there's so much there. That's such a big, that's a big question. <laughs> yeah. So I guess too, just with this question, like you talked a little bit about what you like, the tracks you want to leave, and um, is there anything, like anything specific, uh, in terms of knowledge that you feel that you want, you know, future generations to know? Like, is there like a number one thing that? Well, my. My gift that I have, I guess, is that rites of passage. And, you know, to me, to me, that's, that's important. Because, you know, we hear that the, the women are the, the teachers. They're the teachers of the knowledge, teachers of the language, you know, teachers of all the different ceremonies that they need to be aware of. You know? So, if there was any one thing, it would be the role of woman. You know, the role and the responsibility the woman has in regards to her children and her partner, or even creation in general. Creator fashioned 
her like like how he's you know because he created all of this and so you know her her role is is to be able to give life but even as she's carrying that life you know she's molding that life just like the creation story you know and she's molding that that life so to me, the woman is a very important, um, important component when we talk about indigenous knowledge <laughs> or education, you know. Because when you look at the woman, you know, like she, she has to be, she's in tune with her children. You know, she's in tune with what, what uh, is happening with them. She can pick up on it right away. Like I have a daughter that lives in Texas, I know when something's up, you know, and then when I call her, you know, she'll end up telling me, like, what's happening, and, you know, that, that's, I call it, that's the umbilical cord, it, your the child is still connected to your umbilical cord, you know, but we don't really see it, you know, but that's, that's how, how I see that, so the woman then, you know, she, because she is the first teacher, She's she's the one that gave this little human being life, you know. And and even though like you know the father is there, but it's it's her that's actually teaching the child mostly about values, res like respect, for example, and stuff like that, you know. And children will do what you do. Like they'll they'll act like you act, and. So the 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 mother is the woman is really important. I would go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay, so, so the next question um, is: Are there any stories, or we kind of talked to this actually? Are there any particular stories that you'd want your grandchildren or great grandchildren to be able to hear you talk about in terms of indigenous knowledge? I think one. It's funny because when I was down in Texas visiting my granddaughter, I took out the Michelle's book and I read some stories to her in that book. And, and I think one of the most important one is that the, that should be passed on from generation to generation is is the creation story. Because, you know, like I, I hear it even today that, you know, if you don't know where you're going, or where you came from, how do you know where you're going? We hear that often, you know, and it, and and it does, it does make sense. And you know, like we 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 have to kind of see our path from back then in order to move forward, and and even like our history, Nishnabe history, like what has happened to us as a people, you know. And so as long as we know what is happening there and why and where we're going, our generations need to know our history. So I think that's so important. They need to learn their history. But the creation story is, is one, just one aspect of that. And the language is another component. I think, like when we're talking about 10 years, my goodness, our language is, if we don't start speaking our language and using our language like like I look at my little granddaughter she I mean she's just learning Navajo and to me that's fine as long as it's, it's an indigenous language and for me not knowing my my language you know like as, as strong as some of the elders my age like I feel like I'm really missing out on something and when we go, when I go to places and I hear that language, you know, it's just, it's just, it just really moves me, you know. So I think the language needs to be really promoted, and it really needs to be brought in the forefront. And because our language, you know, if we don't have our language, you know, what's going to happen to our culture? Uh, yeah. And because it's it's so important that language, you know. And um, I think too the other, like my other granddaughter, she just recently f 
fasted her very first one in the fall. And to me, like when she did that, what that was telling me is that connecting to the spiritual aspect of life. So, you know, she, to me, like when we talk about spirituality, you know, we know that there's spirit, there's a spirit in, in every living thing or human beings. You know? But we also know that there's spirits that are, you know, that are around our ancestors and so on. You know? But when she did that, that's what she connected to, was the spiritual aspect of life. So I think, you know, when we look at, uh, you know, the next 10 years or over, something like that, children need to be taught about the spiritual aspect of life. So yes, yes, we know that a tree outside has life. There's a spirit there. There's winds, you know, there's a spirit in there. But how, how in depth do they want to learn about that? So, you know, when I look at that little girl that went out there to fast, you know, she, she came home and, you know, she, she told her mom, I just, I want to go back there, she said, you know. She says, I miss it. She said, because um, I could smell, it was a different kind of smell. And, and she said, I, I just, you know, she hugged her, uh, she took her own pillow out there. Right? And, and so she, she just hugged her pillow and she just said, Mom, I could just smell it being out there. But that's that connection, you know, to her spirituality and her spirit connecting to what was out there. And, you know, to to have that experience, I think that's really important. Like all children should go through something like that. Because then they, they get a better understanding of, you know, when they walk their path. There's always going to be those spirits there, you know. And those spirits are those ones that are going to give them the, that guidance and direction. And, you know, I see children today that they don't really have that, you know. And it's, it's kind of sad in a way because they don't have that connection. Like when I look at this little girl, and even my own girls, you know, how they, they connect and how they, they feel about that. When I look at that little girl, you know, and how she she is now, you know, just just the way she conducts herself and what she says, you know? and she usually tells her mom sometimes, "We need a smudge," you know? because for whatever is happening, you know. So that's that spiritual connection needs to be part of that down the road, you know. More more of our people need to learn more about that. Yes, it's starting. Like, there's a lot of our people that are starting to go to ceremonies and whatnot, you know. So it's starting, but we really need to maintain that and probably bring bring it more, um, like bring it out more. Like sometimes, you know, we, we talk about that, like uh, we know that the spirits do exist, you know, and those are the ones that help us sometimes. Sometimes those are the ones that could scare us too. <laughs> 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 So, but yeah, it's important to know that, to understand that, though, you know? and that you yourself is a spirit in this, in this vessel, the body that's walking, that's walking this, this realm. You know, one time, I was out in the bush, and um, well, I guess like I was fasting, and uh, anyways. When I was sitting there, it just got really, all of a sudden, it just got really quiet. And this was in the spring. And it just was really, all of a sudden, and then I could sense something coming, you know. And I was just, you know, I, I, I well, I couldn't run because I was, you know, <laughs> but I just sensed something was coming and I didn't know what it was. And then as it was moving this way towards me, I, um, I kind of braced myself. I hung on to my tobacco, you know, and I just kind of waited because as as it was moving, the birds were qu they were quiet, 
you know, they were quiet when that was coming because there was just no sound out there, mm -hmm. nothing, even no wind, total quiet. And that's what I noticed because the birds weren't singing. And I thought, you know, like, I have to follow them, you know. So I kept quiet and I just sat there and I held my tobacco in my hand and I could feel that coming, you know. And then and it was just getting so close and I just went, <gasps> and I could just feel it. It went right through me and then it passed. And then I, and then I kind of sat up there, you know, and I was sitting there and then opened my eyes and then I started to hear the birds, you know, they started to sing again. Anyway, what I found was that it was the changing of the season from spring to summer. And and that's a spiritual connection, you know. Mm -hmm. To to feel that, you know, the that season change like that, that to me, you know, it was really it was such a like scary but awesome feeling, you know. And it kinda relates to to my name, you know. Mm -hmm. So so that spiritual connection to creation and to one another is so, it's important you know, when we talk about the 10 years. You know. Learn more about that. Children need to learn more about that. Whether it's through fasting or whether it's through, you know, storytelling, like even storytelling, when we do, when we say, tell stories, there's meanings behind them. and when you hear those stories because it's like it's like if there was a, um, say a, a group of people sitting around the circle my age exactly my age you know and we hear a story somebody might get that story different compared to my my interpretation for me because we're at a different level of growth and development you know what you know spirituality whatever you know so that story has a different meaning for that different person who's still yet the same age as me. So, and then you place a child in there, in that circle, when you're telling the story, the child may have a different interpretation of it. So when we talk about storytelling, then it's actually um, a way to bring meaning to life, our life. You know? Because going back to parenting, going back to being a mother, when the child is growing, we have no right to have control over the child. But we can give them decisions, or choices rather, you know? Well, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? You know? Because in our whole life we're always going to make choices. You know? There's always going to be two, for sure. So we have to, you know, so by doing that with the child, then we're allowing that child to make the decisions for for himself, you know, himself. And then that way it it still maintains that power that the creator gave them, you know. And we have no right to 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 control our children in that way. Yes, yeah, sometimes we have to say and be stern and say, No, you can't do that, you know. But sometimes, so a majority of the time, you're going to give them options, you know, because it's not our place to to have that control over them. And when you give them those options, then they they have the power to make the choice, you know, rather than us saying, "No, you go there," or, you know, "Yes, you can do this," or you. Know, so you always you always teach them that about giving them choices and options, you know. So I know, like when my girls were little, I used to tell them lots of stories about um, you know just just life in general, and and sometimes they were based on life experience, and sometimes they were stories from teachings or like ceremonies, and. You know, like just just sharing that with them, they, I could see like how how they themselves have developed personally, you know, and how they they still have that power to be who they are. You know? 
So when you give a child choices, then you're not taking that power away from them. So when you give them storytelling, it's up to them to, to decide, well, what, what does that mean for me? You get it? Yeah. You know? So, so storytelling is really important. And yes, they say storytelling is not, can only be done in the wintertime, but sometimes when you're talking or trying to discipline your child, mm -hmm. you're going to give them a story be related to, to that action or behavior, you know? And then they make the decision on how they, they see that in relation to the, the mistake that they made. So, I can't even think of an example right now. Um, well, you know, like, just just for example, I, I'm going to try it. <laughs> if, if a child was caught stealing, okay? So, if that child was caught stealing, then the storytelling around that, you know, is, well, you could, you could give a story, your own personal story, or you could give a story related to, to maybe... Uh, what do they call those stories? Because um, uh, a story that's related to that, anyways, mm -hmm. you know. And so then that gives the child, you know, the child is made to think about her actions or her behavior, you know, in relation to what he or she did. What the what stealing? That's not a very good one. <laughs> or hurting somebody, you know. Because you could use the story of respect, something around respect, you know, if a child is hurting somebody. Mm -hmm. So storytelling is really, I don't even think many of us do that anymore, you know. I don't think too many of us do storytelling in relation to a, a child's um, behavior and actions. You know? Or storytelling when uh, somebody comes to you for advice on something. Then you give a story. The reason I say that is that um, I remember, like, I met this old man a long time, and people probably know of him already, like Peter Ochis, you know, but he, he used to tell stories, you know. And, and one story I remember he was sharing, because he talked about it, and, but he based it on his personal life, and he said, you know, I never smoked in my life. And he said, my wife died. He was, he was already up in age, you know. And he said, my wife died. And then somebody came over and, you know, I was grieving so much. Uh, and he gave me a, a pack of smokes and told me to smoke these cigarettes. And he said, that's how I, I got to smoking. And so I was sitting there. And I asked, um, I asked other people who were there, what did you get out of that story? And I said, well, just that he picked up smoking. Yeah, he did, but what else? But to me, the story that I got out of it, like I didn't say they were wrong or anything, you know, mm -hmm. and I shared with him, the story I got out of that is because of the grief of his the loss of his wife. He needed something there to help him. You know? mm -hmm. And so he picked up smoking. So, you know, there's reasons why we do so. And even myself, like I used to smoke. And I remember, I remember having my cigarette. And I share this story. Story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said one time, you know, because people were trying to quit, you know, and I said to them, you know what I did? I said, one time, I said, my sister and I, it was March, is quit smoking month, I guess. So I mentioned to her, you know, we should quit smoking. And she said, yeah, you know. So anyway, then um, she calls me the night before, you know. Well, you ready? For what? I said. <laughs> 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 they quit smoking. Oh, yes, I said, we did say that. And she said, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I went outside here. It was probably close to midnight. I went out here, and I took 
I had that done, my last cigarette. And this what made me think about Peter Ochispa's story. And then I said to him, I said, well, when I was holding that cigarette, you know, I said, well, you've been with me all these years. Well, you know, not like I was, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I said, but now, you know what? I need to do it on my own. I need to walk by myself now. And then I was talking to that cigarette. I said, I have to do this on my own. You've been a good friend, but I need to do this on my own. I never had no cravings. And I just stopped just like that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to look at it uh, from a psychological perspective, you know, like I had to tell myself it's internally that, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't need it. But I share that story every once in a while, and then people kind of laugh at me, and you know. But in reality, it's a story, yeah. based on a life experience. So that story, and even funny stories. It's how it's the it's the mind is developing on those stories. So going back to that, if all people were sitting in that in a circle my age, people would get a, would tell get an interpretation different from what I got out of it, you know. Because we're all growing at a different different level. So those stories are really important to tell. You know, whether it's a life experience, whether it's a Nana Bush story or, you know, we tell stories in the winter. Like they're important. And we're losing that. We're losing that. That's why that's part of that that's so important when we talk about storytelling, you know. And going back to my little granddaughter in the States from reading those stories, you know, and the one that she really liked the most was The Flood. And she really enjoyed that story about the flood. You know? So, you know, like we, we really need to... Um, we really need to focus on that. But getting back to spirituality, going back to my little granddaughter again. My little granddaughter, you know, there's there's no bush around where she is. <laughs> so she's never been really exposed to to the bush. So I when she came home here, they were spending a couple of weeks here, and I went to do um, a ceremony back at the power grounds here. And so I, I, I asked her if she wanted to come with me. So we went and, uh, you know, sitting sitting around the fire there, you know, and then um, afterwards, the feast food, we have to take it out in the bush. Right? So anyway, I I, um, I took that uh, feast food and I said, come on. So she walked with me and then as we were getting closer to the bush, she said, I'm scared, I don't want to go in the bush, you know. And I had to, you know, and I shared with her, and I said, it's okay, you know, you're going to be just fine in there, I said. Huh? So she held my hand as we were walking in, you know. But as soon as she got in there, further in, you know, she realized what I was sharing with her, that she, it was safe, you know, she was okay. Like, so she was just running around <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. But that's, that's what I'm saying, like those, you know, that spirituality, it's, it, the, her spirit connected to, you know, what was in the bush. And she didn't get afraid anymore, you know. And, and uh, so she knew. Again, it goes back to being in the blood. You know? Like our, our ancestors are there in our blood you know, when, we, when we do stuff. You know? Yeah, that's spirituality, you know. So I think I already did that. What yeah. stories or teachings can you share? Yeah, you did that one. You did the. Did you want to add anything to your vision of education in the next ten years? Well, number one, it needs to be taught by Anishinaabe. You know, and I think that's the only way we're ever going to learn is by our own people teaching us, and and. Whether it's land-based education, whether it's even in the institutions, like the buildings and stuff like that, you know, it should be taught by Anishinaabe, you know, an mm -hmm. indigenous person. 
because that connection we have, you know, it's right there. As soon as somebody says something or we do something silly, we you know, <laughs> like we yeah. laugh and we know though, you know. So I think to me that's that has to be it has to be taught by an you know, an indigenous person. And even the writing of curriculums, anything like that, it should be done by indigenous people. Like I I, I truly believe that that it has to be done by our people. You know, anything that has to do with education down the road, it needs to be done by our people. Because we we have a unique way of viewing the world, you know. And we have a we have a a relationship that's in our blood, you know, and so to have anybody else teach that would not they wouldn't grasp that, you know, they wouldn't understand it. So I really believe that that needs to happen. Huh? Anything that has to do with education in regards to Native people, it has to be done by Anishinaabe people. Huh? I don't believe either that we should, you know, record our teachings, you know, or, or write our teachings down. But if there's anything that's going to be done, it should be very generic. You know, not, not in depth, you know. And it's just because that uh, that's something that belongs to us and it should stay with us, you know. Just like the puberty fast, you know. So I don't think I'd like to see that written down in a, you know. I mean, you can talk about it very general, mm -hmm. but not the, the story. You know which one I'm talking about, yes. right? Like that, there shouldn't be written down. So there's oral stories that relates to the ceremonies. You know? So that's where I, I would say, anyways. You know? Yeah.